What's up YouTube, I'm Guy, and today on the channel we are reviewing a Shinola. I know what you're thinking, Shinola, are you kidding me? Yeah, I understand, it's not a particularly well-respected brand in the watch collecting community. But a viewer of mine reached out to me a while back and said I have one of these watches, I believe he won it in some sort of giveaway. He said, do you want to check it out, do you want to review it? Well, yeah, of course, I'll review just about anything. And because of the controversy surrounding the brand, I was even more interested in checking it out. I wanted to know for myself, is there actually something wrong with this watch? So we have it here today. Now let me extend my sincere apology to that viewer. I was sick for like a month and I'm way behind on my videos. I will be getting this watch back to you as soon as possible, so sit tight. In the meantime, Today we're gonna to check out this Shinola Runwell. It's the 47 millimeter version. And I'll tell you guys what I think. So I kinda of wanna do this review in two parts. First of all, I wanna just review the watch. I wanna jump over to the tabletop. I wanna look at this watch and I want to evaluate it and share it with you guys without any of the negative connotation that surrounds the Shinola brand. There is a lot of it. <laughs> so then we're gonna come back over here to the studio view, and we're gonna discuss those factors as well. But I want to evaluate the watch for what it is before we talk about all of those controversies that have surrounded the brand in recent years. I wanna add one more quick message for you guys. Stay tuned for my next few reviews. They're gonna be Hamilton watches, one vintage and one current production watch that were provided from me by the guys over at the Hamilton Watch Owners Facebook group. If you're a fan of Hamilton watches and you're not a member of that Facebook group, go over to Facebook and join it. All right, guys, here we have it. The Shinola Runwell 47 millimeter. I have it sitting on top of its wooden box that it comes in. As the owner of this watch put it to me, the box is nicer than the watch. Uh, I don't know if I'd go that far. I think that the box is kind of nice and I'll give you a quick look at it because it comes with something kind of interesting that I've never seen before. So allow me to get the watch out of the way here. The, the wooden box, and uh, it doesn't really fit in frame on the camera too terribly well. You know, just a square wooden box. It's got Shinola Detroit. I don't think there's much on the bottom really. But if we open it open, it's got a magnetic latch, by the way. So a little bit of mag magnetism holding it closed. And when we pop it open, you can see where the watch would sit. And then there's this little tin of uh, what they call leather care balm. You can unscrew that cap and there's like, literally, it's kind of like lip balm, I guess, to take care of your leather strap. I've never seen a watch come with something like that before. I thought that that was interesting. Value added? No, probably not. This is probably worth about 25 cents. But interesting nonetheless, and I thought I would share that with you. We'll go ahead and get the box out of the way and I'll bring the watch into frame and we'll take a close look at it. So this is the Shinola Runwell 47 millimeters. And by 47 millimeters, obviously the case diameter is 47 millimeters. Really the main shortcoming of this watch for me is the size. It is grotesquely oversized. We have a case diameter, again, of 47 millimeters. A lug width of 24 millimeters, just way too big. Lug to lug from the top of the case to the bottom of the case from the ends of each of these wire lugs of 51 millimeters, which is a little, again, oversized, and then a reasonable thickness of 11 millimeters. That's about the only dimension that is tolerable, in my opinion. Basic features and specifications for this watch. Stainless steel case with a screw-down crown. That's pretty interesting that a quartz watch would have a screw-down crown. That's not something that we see all the time. Water resistance is 50 meters of uh, yeah water resistance. It does have a double-domed sapphire crystal. And I'll kind of come in here and give you an angled look at it. It's a nice crystal, to be perfectly honest with you. Uh, you know, I'm actually impressed with the quality of the crystal, as well as the quality of the case. So, you know, we touched on it. The finishing on the case is solid, polished on all of the uh, parts of the case. Uh, you know, I, I don't necessarily fall in love with completely polished watches. I tend to like a mix of brushing and polishing or just all brushed finishes, honestly. I'm not like into that super, super bling, but I can say that the quality of the case is actually really decent. It's not really a whole lot to complain there in, in those terms. The size is a completely different story, of course. We have a black dial with a small seconds sub-dial. You can see down at the six o'clock position. And the dial is as well as the handset and the, the, the numerals on the dial, loomed with Super Luminova. Um, it's okay loom. I'll bring in a shot of the loom here. 
it's basically so-so. But to be honest, in my experience with almost all watches, the loom is always just kind of so-so, with the exception of Seiko watches, particularly when we're in this $500 and less price point. Moving right along here, this runs the, what they call the Argonite 1069 Quartz Movement. Basically, it's a Swiss Ronda movement, a Swiss Ronda 1069. So that's going to be one of the big complaints for people about this watch. It's just a quartz movement. Now, I've made it super clear in the past in reviews that I've done on other watches that, you know, I, I like quartz watches. I have no problem with them. At a certain price point, it becomes a problem. And I guess at $550 MSRP, you might say that it becomes a problem with this watch. But this watch can be found for much cheaper than that, so keep that in mind. But in general, I do like quartz movements. As much as mechanical or automatic movements, no. No, not as much. I think that they're a little bit more fun, they're a little bit more interesting. But I'm never going to discount or discredit a watch just because it runs a quartz movement. Now again, this is just a basic Ronda movement, and you can buy those for like $20, like from watch suppliers. So why we have a $20 movement in a $550 watch is a good question, and we'll discuss that more in the closing thoughts on the outro of this video where I discuss some of the more obvious downsides about this watch. Uh, but this, wa this movement is good in that it's accurate. Uh, they list it at minus 10 to plus 20 seconds per month. Uh, battery life on this should be between 24 and 36 months. So, you know, uh, really a decent movement for what, you know, what it is, honestly. This watch does come on a black leather strap with contrast stitching and... Uh, for a stock strap that, you know, comes with a watch, honestly, it's it's not bad at all. I've seen lots of stock straps on watches from brands like Seiko that uh, are watches that are basically beloved by the collector community, but the straps on them are more or less junk, worthless garbage that you're going to probably discard immediately. If I owned this watch, I'd keep this strap. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it. It's a decent quality. It's lined on the back. You can see the Shinola branding there. Uh, yeah, other than the fact that it's 24 millimeters, I have no complaints about this strap, and that's really not a problem with the strap, more so a problem with the size of the case and the lug width. Something else that's interesting about this watch that you really never see, it does have a lifetime warranty. Granted, it's a quote-unquote limited lifetime warranty, so they're not going to warranty it from abuse and misuse, but a lifetime warranty on a watch is, I don't know, sort of unheard of. Two years, five years, yeah, you see that all the time, but I rarely ever see a lifetime warranty. Now the explanation for that is obviously this is an extremely expensive watch. When you buy it, they can probably afford to replace it three or four times over and still make money in the end. So I guess you should expect to have a really good warranty considering the price point of this watch. It has an interesting case back. It's a screw in case back. You can see the four screws at either corner near the, uh, near the lugs there. It's got this I don't know what this material is here, some sort of uh, polymer kind of inset uh, puck, you know, with the logo and uh, model number, serial number, whatever, whatever all that is, uh, built in Detroit branding. If we come in really close here, USA Movement with Swiss parts. It's kind of funny that they call this a USA Movement, I guess. Maybe because they modify the Ronda Quartz Movement, but it is based on a Swiss Ronda Movement, so, you know, again, I don't really know what's up with that marketing, and we're going to discuss the kind of deceptive marketing tactics that Shinola uses in general in the outro, but I just want to kind of cover the features and the quality and the specifications and everything first. And uh, it's a nice looking case back. It's interesting. It's different. Again, I've never seen something with this kind of case back insert. Uh, I kind of like it, honestly. It's not bad. Backtracking a little bit and talking about the case, I want to talk about these wire lugs. I'm not a fan of this aesthetic. It's kind of not super uncommon, although you don't see it really often, but there's a lot of watches that use this style of wire lug that comes off of just a basic circular, almost pocket watch-like case. Uh, yeah, I just don't like that aesthetic or style. That's my personal preference. If, uh, you know, you're into that, then this might be something to consider. We did touch on the crown, and I mentioned that it's a screw-down crown. I'll come in here a little bit closer so you can see it does have the uh, Shinola little lightning bolt branding. Uh, it's sort of an onion-style shaped crown. The threading to unscrew this crown is actually quite good. Very, very good, to be perfectly honest. Pops out with a little bit of a spring action once you get it unthreaded there. In the first position, the crown does nothing since this is a quartz movement. You can, of course, pull it out to the second position, hacks the movement, second hand stops, and you can set the time as needed. Push the crown back in, a little downward pressure, and screw it in to re-thread it. The, the threading on the crown 
into the tube on the case, it's excellent. It's actually top notch, in particular when I'm comparing this to other watches that I have a ton of experience with, such as Seiko dive watches, the threading on those watches can be downright terrible. So, uh, you know, that's kind of impressive uh, for what it is. I'll zoom in kind of close here and give you a quick look at the dial and handset. I like the style and the aesthetic of this dial quite a bit. The sub seconds dial has a uh, kind of little highlighted markers at the uh, first 15 seconds. There's a little highlighted tip on the counterbalance side. The, uh, the hands are decent, not my favorite style, but they're okay. But the dial itself, I do like that it's a really kind of plain, straightforward, utilitarian look to it. Oversized Arabic numerals, uh, embellished markers at each of the five minute points on the outer chapter ring with small graduations for each second or minute in between. Overall, it's you know, a nice looking presentation. I would probably like a watch just like this if it were significantly smaller, like eight, nine, 10 millimeters smaller. It's just way, way, way too big. But the overall style and presentation of the dial is very nice. And uh, if it weren't for these wire lugs, I mean, the entire presentation would be something that I really do like. But again, I'm just not a big fan of those. So what does a 47 millimeter watch look like on my six and three quarter inch wrist? Well, it looks a little ridiculous, honestly. I mean, I guess I could wear it if I liked the style. It's not like it's overhanging my wrist by any significant margin, but it just feels like I'm having a pie plate on my wrist and it's way, 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 way too big. Uh, but I figured I'd give you a quick wrist shot so you can see the strap is a good length. It's not like I have a ton of tail hanging over there on the other end. Uh, just, uh, yeah, way, way too big. So that's the basics, specifications, features, quality, design, you know, the, the topics that we normally cover in a review video. Uh, yeah, overall, as a watch, if we were to erase that name Shinola off the dial, I, I kind of like it. I think it's really pretty decent. Again, price might be a point of contention, although I do find them for much cheaper than the $550 MSRP. So, you know, price may or may not be a problem once you start shopping around. I'm gonna jump back over to the studio view. We're gonna talk about some closing thoughts in particular. We're gonna talk about some of the controversy that surrounds the Shinola brand, some of the downsides in that regard, and then close out this review. So I'll be right back. So we've reviewed this watch and I think as is evident, I kind of like it for a watch. I mean, first of all, the size is grotesquely too large for me. I would never wear a 47 millimeter watch. I do believe they make a smaller one. I think it's 41 millimeters, but don't quote me on that. Regardless, 41 millimeters for this style of watch would still be too large for me. But other than that, there's not much that I don't like about it. It's a quartz movement, and as you guys know, I like quartz watches. I'm not the type of person that says, oh, if it's quartz, it's garbage. At a certain price point, perhaps I would avoid buying a quartz watch over an automatic watch. And I guess in general, I do prefer automatic and mechanical watches, but I don't blanketly dislike quartz watches. And I would not say that because this is a quartz watch, it's a bad watch. Now the issues with this watch and the reason why so many people dislike it, I guess is twofold. Number one, it's the price. And number two, it's the deceptive marketing techniques that they have practiced over the last few years. Let's address the price first, $550 MSRP. Is that too expensive? Yeah, it is too expensive a little bit. I think it's a really well-made watch though, and it's not exorbitantly overpriced, so I, I can't fault it too much. Number two to that, you can find them for much cheaper. Now, I've seen other people's videos on these watches, and they talk about seeing them on sale at department stores in the two to $300 range at 200 to 300 bucks. I think it's an okay value. I wouldn't hesitate to buy one if it was something that I liked and that I wanted at that price point, but I probably wouldn't go $550. That's just me. If a person told me they just loved any, t any watch, it doesn't matter if it's this watch or some other brand, and I felt like it was a little overpriced, but they said, I just love it, I just want it, and I wouldn't fault them for that. Get what you like, it's your money. So to answer the question on price, is it overpriced? Yeah, a little bit, but it's not horrendous. So here's the big one, the deceptive marketing practices. So the FTC told Shinola back in 2016, I think, you can't market this watch as, I believe they called it built in Detroit. 
you can't say it's made in America. I believe their slogan was where America is made or something to that effect. The FTC determined that this watch was made from 100% imported parts. Granted, it is assembled in their factory in Detroit, but that all of the parts, including the movement, the dials, the crystals, the cases, everything comes from imported parts means that you cannot put made in America, made in the USA, or anything like that that would lead the consumer to believe that it is 100% manufactured here in the United States in, in, in your marketing on the watch anywhere. The restrictions on using that term, made in the USA, means that it has to be 100% manufactured in the United States. Ironically, when we see Swiss made on a watch, that is much, much of a looser definition. I believe it's only 60% of the value of the watch must be made from Swiss parts. So, people that ridicule this watch for being made from uh, imported parts, be, a, be the sources from, you know, Southeast Asia, be them Swiss parts such as the Ronda movement. Uh, I mean, you know, you're buying Swiss watches, if they're not the super high-end ones, very likely the Swiss watches that you're buying in that same sort of price range are not 100% Swiss made either. That said, do I dislike the deception that they did use, the deception that they were trying to sell it as an American-made product when it was really only assembled in America. I do find that a little bit distasteful. I'm not going to lie. I think that it was probably the wrong thing to do. Another potential issue, they're not really a watch brand. They're, and to their credit at least, they are pretty clear about this. They're a lifestyle brand. They make products like bicycles and leather goods, all kinds of stuff. They're not really a watch brand. Um, do you want to have a semi-expensive wristwatch that's basically a fashion watch? I guess that's what we're getting at here, right? Is this just a fashion watch since they're a quote-unquote lifestyle brand? You know, that's for you to decide. If I was going to put my money down, no, I would not buy one of these watches. Again, because of the sizing. Uh, you know, aesthetically, uh, there's a lot to like about this watch, and we've already covered that. But if it was my money, no, I wouldn't purchase one. But I wouldn't fault anybody else that wants one, that likes them, that's attracted to them. I think that they're decent enough watches, especially if you can get them at that sale price. But yeah, you're not getting a true horological example of, you know, some, uh, how should I put this? It's not a hor horologically significant watch. That's, you know, absolutely a fact, without a doubt. Uh, but sometimes people just like what they like, and I'm okay with that. It's just a fossil watch. Another complaint that I hear people throw around out there. I kind of like fossil watches. My very first watch was a fossil watch, so that it's quote-unquote just a fossil watch is kind of okay by me, honestly. Uh, again, it's a quartz watch, and I like quartz for the most part. Um, fossil is a brand that I kind of like. They do make some cool stuff, although typically fossil watches are much more affordable than this. Uh, the former chairman of Fossil retired in like 2010 and became the founder of this brand, the, the Shinola brand. I think their parent company is called Bedrock something or another. I don't exactly know. But uh, yeah, I mean, he used his connections in the Fossil community and his experience, connections with manufacturing to lift this brand up, obviously, to start this brand. So yeah, it's basically a Fossil watch. I guess that's true. Um, I haven't looked at a lot of Fossil watches lately. The Fossil watches that I've had many, many years in the past, though, the quality here on the Shinola is significantly better, without a doubt. But again, I haven't looked at a Fossil watch up close in person in the last five or ten years. I don't know if the quality of those watches has gotten better. Considering the price differential, I want to guess that they're probably not of the same quality, but I couldn't say for sure. So that's going to wrap this up, guys. That's my review of the Shinola Runwell 47mm. Not a bad watch in its own right. You know, reasonably decent quality. A little bit expensive. Definitely some deceptive marketing practices in the past from the, uh, you know, the company as far as representing what exactly it is that this watch is and what it's made from, but I mean, you know, in the world of corporate America and businesses, that's really not something to be surprised about. You probably have your head in the sand if you think that that's not happening all over the place anyway. And while I don't excuse it or forgive it, you know, it's not alarming to me. It's not, uh, it's not, it doesn't come as a shock, I guess I should say. Bottom line, would I recommend this watch? Look, 
I'm never gonna tell somebody not to buy something that they're not interested in. If you like it, if it appeals to you, if you wanna spend the money, sure, go for it. Would I purchase it? Again, I would not. But, you know, that's just me, that's my two cents. Thanks for tuning in, guys, I appreciate it. If you want to support the channel, down in the description of this video and of every video I make is a list of ways you can help me. Number one, becoming a Patreon is something that I would super appreciate. Number two, all of my Facebook and social media accounts, follow me on there. Number three, I have links to my Amazon affiliate account. Whether or not you want to purchase something that I've reviewed, or if you just want to go on Amazon and do your normal shopping, I get a small commission for every transaction that comes through my affiliate link, and it costs you no nothing extra. So that helps me out quite a bit. I appreciate you guys checking out this video. Remember, in the coming week, I'm going to have a couple of Hamilton reviews that were provided to me by the really cool guys over at the Hamilton Watch Owners Group. If you're not a member of that group on Facebook, I encourage you to go over there and join up if you're a fan of Hamilton watches. Thanks again. We'll see you soon. Bye now.